Hey everybody, in an earlier video I modeled a triangular chess set and eagle-eyed viewers in that video might have noticed that I did in fact already have the entire rest of the chess set modeled out, so let me show it off to you today. Now, before I show you the rest of the chess set and how I modeled it in Doodle 3D and the problems that came out from modeling that, I want to talk to you about what's my deal with chess sets. I don't know if any of you are aware, if all of you are aware, but I like chess sets. I have a whole collection up here on my show-off shelf of various chess sets, and I use them to demonstrate different filaments. Now, I love the iconography of chess set. I think, I think that every chess set I've seen, each one of them is a work of art in and of themselves as a set and as individual pieces. Plus, uh, for those of you who don't know, my, I got my first 3D printer for building a chess set. It was just a chess set that assembled into a robot with bishops on the hand and the, uh, the knight on the feet and pawns hold the whole thing together and the king and queen are rocking it out in the middle right there. You can take this little robot apart and create a whole chess set and play a game of chess with him. And yes, it is super cool because I got that 3D printer for it. So yeah, I, I kind of have an attachment to chess. This particular chess set is printed in ASA, which I made a video about a little while ago and I really enjoy working with it. And so this, chess set has been smoothed out in acetone to look really good in ASA. So when I wanted to demonstrate the use of 3D Doodle and a Raspberry Pi to make 3D printing accessible for people who are disabled and, and have limited ability, or just for that matter, making a 3D printing setup that, as, that is as easy as possible, but more than that could be used entirely on a tablet, I decided to make a little pawn for 3D printing, but to give myself a bit of a challenge, I made it triangular. Doodle 3D, as cool of a program as it is, had some limitations that somewhat affected the design, and I think that that effect is beautiful. So let's, ju let's jump over to Doodle 3D and talk a little bit about the challenges and how that affected the design of this chess set. So first of all, uh, here's the entire set, and, and I'll talk about each one of them uh, in detail. The first one that I modeled was the bishop here. And the bishop, you'll notice that the bishop doesn't have the traditional imagery of that round hat with the slice in it, uh, which is supposed to be iconic of a bishop's hat from the Middle Ages. I don't know if they still wear hats like that. Anyways. When I tried to do this with Doodle 3D, I knew that there was going to be a problem. Doodle 3D can't cut down something diagonally. In fact, it can't really even cut down anything at all because then if you use the, the tapering tools over here, it made them smaller. It didn't make them smaller together. It made them smaller it pointed individually. So it you know, was just as good as I had done them separately. Now the print came out really good looking and I like the look of this print. You'll notice that it, it kind of has an interesting profile because of the direction and, and the way the print went, um, but I generally like it. And then this piece served as the launching point for the rest of the set. I When I modeled this, this piece, I had the top, the body, and then I created this little interface layer in between. I'm not sure why I did that, but I felt at the time that by doing this, I would have a little bit more control over using this to build the rest of the pieces. And I think I was right. When I made the, the rook, all I had to do was copy the bishop, take off the, the two parts on the top, increase the size of that interface layer so that it, you know, looks a bit more like a, a top of a rook, top of a castle piece, and then add three little triangles on the top, which you can see here. Now, it's interesting in the top view that all of these little parts that you're seeing are overlapping on each other so much that you can't tell that they're separate pieces unless I separate them. And that's, that's not inconsistent with the way CAD works in general. The base of these pieces is 
very, very small and it comes together. And I wanted to do that because I started, if you watch me build the pawn in that piece, uh, in that video, I went straight and then I popped the top and the bottom and then the middle and pulled it in to create that little ridge. So I wanted it to have kind of a, an outward slope to it, but it, I maybe overdid it and I maybe made it a little bit too small, which meant that some of the pieces, in order to get them to print well, especially if they got very wide at the top, I had to put a little bit of a skirt on the bottom and then cut it off or a brim. I think it was a brim that they call it. Give it a little bit of extra footing to keep it stuck to the build plate. So if you print this set, you may have to do that. I knew what I wanted to do for the king and the queen. And I started with the king. So there's that same profile part. But then I added a top here that has a, a simple crown like shape. But the king's crowns oftentimes have four bits to kind of simulate the, the crown of the king, whereas the queens, generally speaking, have uh, just a couple of circles on them. And I'm not quite sure what that's supposed to represent. I guess it represents a queen's hat. But in order to do that, I created this shape. So I used our end gone here and just cranked it up to a triangle. I grabbed the line tool and I started drawing lines here and here and here. Uh, something like that. And I think I even went as far as putting some lines in here to make sure that they all connect well. Grab the eraser tool, erase the middle, and then fill it all in. And now I get this shape that I wanted. I somehow messed it up this time, uh, but then I get these extra lines here that I just have to grab and delete, just like that. And there I've got that shape. Then I took that shape into the 3D view. I moved it up to the location that I wanted, moved it into the head of the crown, used a tapering tool and gave it the appropriate shape that I wanted. Now with the queen, I was wondering how am I gonna get those little balls? And I realized, you know what? I can fake it pretty good just by using that same exact shape, that same exact shape that I use for the king. Boom, there you can see it. It's the same exact shape, uh, but shrinking it a little bit top and bottom and then changing the taper of it to do that. So it's actually the same shape for the queen. I just adjusted it in the 3D view to give it that look. Now I wanna point out one last little thing, this little top knot that went on top of the king. When I, when I did the king, all the pieces kind of came together, but I felt like I needed something up top to hold it all together. Without that, it looks a little bit ridiculous. I didn't like it, but when I, I tried putting it on, you'll notice how far back this had to be. And this was the first indication that something was amiss with how 3D Doodle was doing its tapering. First of all, let me make a hexagon. Let me make a triangle square here so that we can have the discussion. Let's fill these in. And then in the 3D view, I'm gonna take all of these uh, we're going to make them taller and then we're going to taper them all in the same way. We're just going to do a simple taper like this. I'm going to grab, I'm just going to create a, a, a circle object and we're going to look at where I have to place this circle object in order to feel like it's, it's centered on the top here. Okay. In the hexagon. Placing this circle object, if I place it right here, okay, it's pretty much, it feels like it's, it's grabbing the top of that tapered object, right? And if you look at the 2D view, it's centered in the center of the object. If I do it with the square, let's grab the square, move it over here. Let's take a look at the 3D view. There, it looks like I've just about hit the center of the square. I've got that tip all encompassed with it. And in the 2D view, it is pretty much centered in the middle of the square. But what happens when I come to the triangle? If I try to center it in the triangle, you'll notice it's not grabbing the top of that. I have to move it up to do that. Why? Well, that's because the triangle, this is not the middle of the triangle as a shape, but it is the middle of the bounding box 
of that shape. If I were to draw a quick box around the outside of this, this triangle, okay, and then move the triangle, oops, grab the move tool and then get the triangle out of the way, you'll notice that that circle is now just about placed in the middle. So it is in fact placed in the middle of the triangle, but it's not what we expect it to be because we expect the middle of the triangle to be kind of the epicenter of all three of these points. So Doodle 3D uses the bounding box of a shape to do its tapering, and that's reasonable. It's very fast to do that math, but for odd-sided shapes, triangles and hexagons and anything with an odd side of shapes, it's going to be imbalanced. Could Doodle 3D fix this problem? Could they make it so that they, they find the middle of a shape? Yes, yes they could. It would not be impossible. The math to do that is out there and known. From the front or the back, it's balanced left to right, but if you look at it from the side, it becomes clear that this piece has a profile. It has a side. It's different from the front because it's doing that bounding box trick. That's not bad. I, I don't want to say that this is wrong. It's a perfectly valid way of doing it, and it kind of creates a personality. It's not what I expected, but it's okay. So. You might have already noticed that the knight in this chess set was uh, a little bit different, okay? Um, I, I used a, I started using the same base, and then I realized I couldn't use the same base. Um, so instead, I had to recreate the base and tried to match the shape of the original one as much as possible. And then I created half of the knight's head laying down. And I tried to create it so that when I took this, stood it up, mirrored it, and put it on top of the knight, that it would print uh, FFF friendly. So no heavy overhangs and things like that. My goal was to create a triangular knight. But with any chess set, I feel like the knight is kind of the, the defining piece for it. Because all the rest of the pieces in a traditional set, chess set could be lathed with just a, maybe a few uh, uh, cuts with a blade, but a, but the knight, that w that's where the artist's hand has to come in. So I thought about this profile and I thought about the fact that we have a front and a back. And so I tried to design the knight so that it would work with that. So I made the front of the knight a little bit flat and the back of the knight a little bit pointed. And here it is, here's the knight as printed. I think it came out absolutely gorgeous. Now, I printed the knight uh, a couple of times. I was trying to see if Simplify 3D or Cura would make any noticeable difference in the knight. And in this case, I actually think that Cura did a better job than Simplify 3D. Uh, there was less ring and it just overall looked a little bit better, but I can, couldn't tell you why. That's one of the rare times that I think Cura has beat Simplify 3D for me. So I'm gonna keep that. They, they both smoothed incredibly well in the acetone as well. So they both look really, really good. Cura, Simplify 3D. I don't know if there's, there's any significant difference. Um, the Cura one got a little bit more smooth, but I think I'm gonna keep that one as the official one in this set. Now I had to take this knight into Blender to do the post-processing. Doodle 3D was not able to finish this knight for me. It doesn't have the ability to take a piece and stand it up and combine it with another one. And that's a functionality that I do wish that Doodle 3D would add to their software. But I've told them that before, and so if they watch this video, it's gonna sound like I'm harping on them about this point. Only because I am and I care about you guys and I want you to achieve good things because I know you can do it. I'm super pleased with the final product of this entire chess set. I'm really proud of this one. It's a simple chess set, it's true. It's not really complicated, but I enjoyed making it and I enjoyed using this software to make it. It's really, Doodle 3D is really a very robust piece of software even at these early stages and I can't wait to see how it continues to develop, to develop as it goes on. Anyways, I thank you guys for, for letting me ramble on about my chess set. And if you would like to print one of these yourself, you can go ahead and hit the download link in the description. As always, I want to thank you guys very much for watching and say safety first. I'll see you next time.
Do you want to know more about 3D printing but don't know where to start? Or did you buy a 3D printer but you need some help getting it going? Don't panic. The beginner's guide to the 3D printing galaxy is here, now, for you. Buy it on Amazon. Thank you.